welcome to Christ Church Meaford and our online service for the fourth Sunday after Pentecost. Our opening hymn is Come, Let Us to the Lord Our God. Come, Let Us to the Lord Our God, which is hymn 607 if you have a hymn book. Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you. 
bright heaven sung. Heart of my own heart, whatever befall, still be my vision, O ruler of all. Let us pray. Ruler of the universe, you call us to radical loyalty beyond all earthly claim. Grant us strength to offer ourselves to you as people who have been raised from death to life through Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The first reading is from the book of Genesis. This reading is the story of the binding of Isaac in the Jewish tradition and the sacrifice of Isaac in the Christian tradition. On the surface, it is a horrible story. It therefore invites us to think deeply about the altars children may sacrifice on and how prior to prioritize our lives. After these things, God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, and he said, here I am. He said, take your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains that I shall show you. So Abraham rose early in the morning, saddled his donkey, and took two of his young men with him and his son Isaac. He cut the wood for the burnt offering and set out and went to the place in the distance that God had shown him. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place far away. Then Abraham said to his young men, Stay here with the donkey. The boy and I will go over there. We will worship, and then we will come back to you. Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on his son Isaac, and he himself carried the fire and the knife. So the two of them walked on together. Isaac said to his father Abraham, Father, and he said, Here I am, son. He said, The fire and the wood are here, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? Abraham said, God himself will provide the lamb for a burnt offering, my son. So the two of them walked on together. When they came to the place that God had shown him, Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then Abraham reached out his hand and took the knife to kill his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here I am. He said, Do not lay your hand on the boy or do anything to him, for I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. And Abraham looked up and saw a ram caught in a thicket by its horns. Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called that place, The Lord Will Provide, as it is said to this day, On the mount of the Lord it shall be provided. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. The psalm for today is Psalm 13. How long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I bear pain in my soul and have sorrow in my heart all day long? How long shall my enemy be exalted over me? Consider and answer me, O Lord my God. Give light to my eyes, or I will sleep the sleep of the death. And my enemy will say, I have prevailed. My foes will rejoice because I am shaken. But I trusted in your steadfast love. My heart shall rejoice in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord because he has dealt bountifully with me. The second reading is from Paul's letter to the Romans. In this reading, it's an affirmation that the role of grace in our lives is to free us to live for more than selfishness. This reading also invites us to consider the motivations behind our actions so that our actions will lead us to what life is giving. Therefore, do not let sin exercise dominion in your mortal bodies to make you obey their passions. 
No longer present your members to sin as instruments of wickedness, but present yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life, and present your members to God as instruments of righteousness. For sin will have no dominion over you, since you are not under law, but under grace. What then? Should we sin because we are not under law, but under grace? By no means. You do not know that if you present yourselves to anyone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one whom you obey, either of sin, which leads to death, or of obedience, which leads to righteousness. But thanks be to God that you, having once been, been slaves of sin, had become obedient from the heart to the form of teaching to which you were entrusted, and that you, having been set free from sin, have become slaves of righteousness. I am speaking in human terms because of your natural limitations. For just as you once presented your members as slaves to impurity and to greater and greater iniquity, so now present your members as slaves to righteousness for sanctification. When you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. So what advantage did you then get from the things of which you now are ashamed? The end of those things is death. But now that you have been freed from sin and enslaved to God, the advantage you get is sanctification. The end is eternal life. For the wage of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to, to you, you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Jesus said, whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward, and whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these least little ones, 
in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. The Gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise to, to you, you, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. We just heard one of the most horrific stories in the Bible, matched only by the one that precedes it, when Abraham sends his slave Hagar and son to the desert. It re represents an abuse of power, matched by the abuse of power displayed in the command of God, to take your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and sacrifice him on an altar. Is this a God of violence? Is Abraham delusional? Or is this an opportunity to plumb the depths of what it means to be human in relation to the divine? We know that God is not about the abuse of power and does not desire violence. The whole of the Bible is an invitation to peace and well-being through a relationship with God. We also know that in the Hebrew Bible, there are a number of places where child sacrifice is denounced as the worst possible sin. We do know also that child sacrifice was practiced by cultures surrounding Abraham. So at one level, this could be a story that tells people at the time that God does not desire child sacrifice. What is clear? is that it is a test of Abraham not to put anything between himself and God. Abraham, we are told, is to be a blessing to the nations. And here is a story from the Midrash that illustrates that blessing. Elie Wiesel tells a story from the Midrash, which is like Jewish commentary on the scripture. In this commentary, the tables are turned. At the very moment that God told Abraham to stop and put down the knife not to kill Isaac, Abraham said to God, you promised me I was going to have as many children as there are stars in the sky. And then you told me to kill my son Isaac. Even though I knew you were making a mistake, even though I knew you were wrong, I was obedient. I did not revolt. Now you want me to put down the knife. I want something from you. And Abraham makes God promise that when future generations make errors, God must forgive them no matter the mistake. Here is another interpretation of this story from Jewish Midrash. Human beings sometimes want to go along to get along. We have to pick our battles because there are so many to choose from when tackling the injustices of our society. The Midrash says, at some point, all of us need to take a stand against injustice. We all have an inner voice that coaxes us at the right moment. When Abraham put down the knife, it was his moment of declaring a wrong. Parents are supposed to care for their children and raise them to become the children God called them to be. Rabbi Sachs takes this a step further. He reminds us that in the ancient world, and in the world not so very long ago, fathers owned their children. They owned their wives and their servants or slaves. A father could do what he wanted with them, including killing them if it was his wish. Sachs, first of all, reminds us that since God is the creator of the universe, everything belongs to God. God, in the end, is the arbitrator of everything, humans, land, and animals. God is reminding Abraham of that in this story. In the staying of Abraham's arm, Sachs suggests that God creates a legal space in that moment between the parent and the child. The parent does not have the right to do what the parent wishes necessarily. Because only when that legal space exists 
Do children then have the right to grow to become independent individuals? This story is a foundational story for three religions of the world. This shocking story gets our attention to make a foundational point. God is the creator of the universe. God created the laws by which the universe functions. Humans need to discern and understand these laws so that we might live well in the world God created. The connection between Isaac and Jesus is also one that has been noted by theologians. Even the rabbis have commented that Isaac carried the wood for the sacrifice on his back, as one would carry a cross. The evangelists, who wrote what we know as the Gospels, were think certainly thinking about this in their desire to share the good news. This is a foundational story for Christianity where Jesus gives his life to free the world from sin. And it is foundational as Christianity began to separate itself from Judaism. But just like we are not to literalize the story of Abraham and Isaac, so we are not to reduce the story of Jesus' sacrifice to God sent his son into the world to suffer and die. God hates child sacrifice, full stop. God does not condone child abuse and did not provide the model for us to emulate. We just heard the end of the missionary section of the Gospel of Matthew. When Jesus is preparing the disciples for the conflict that will inevitably follow as they share the good news, it is about the democratization of power Inevitably, those with power do not want to give it up or share it. This is a major problem with our governing authorities now as it was in Jesus' day. Once they win an election, it seems the grand vision that got them there slips out the window and they begin to plan how they will win the next election. Jody Wilson-Raybould had an article in Saturday's Globe about exactly that. Her experience in seeking to address racial inequality in Canada as Attorney General and Minister of Justice met with resistance. I'm sure we all remember that story. We have now, instead, empty symbolism that is not dealt with these imbalances of power, leaving racialized people, particularly indigenous and black people, vulnerable. The question she raises in the article, are we at the tipping point, and wonders whether the, the promise of this moment will be met. We need leaders like Abraham, who will take a stand against injustice, who will stay their arm, who will recognize a wrong and not be afraid to act. We need leaders who are willing to create the legal space around vulnerable people and groups to ensure they get a share of the resources that belong not to the individual owners, but to God for the well-being of all. Je Jesus leaves this missionary section of the gospel with the command for hospitality. Hospitality breaks down barriers. Hospitality creates relationships between people. Giving a cup of cold water to a prophet is to join in the cause of the prophet. A righteous one is one in right relationship to God and creation, a relationship of justice that racialized groups are longing for. A little one is one who is powerless and victimized by our society. To stand in solidarity with vulnerable people, with prophets and little ones, and those who seek righteousness, is to stand with God, who sent Jesus to teach us how to live. I preach in the name of the living and loving God. Amen. Amen. We continue with our affirmation. We are not, not alone. alone. 
We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the Church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, to to love and serve others, to to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope. In life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. I invite you to prayer and encourage you to add your own petitions to the prayers as we pray for on this fourth Sunday after Pentecost. God has called us to be priests for all peoples, offering to, the God, to God the world's concerns. Let us then pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs, saying, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Blessed are you, our sovereign God, for you do not abandon what you have created, but continue to make your grace known among us. We thank you for those who have chosen to speak your reconciling word in this age, and we pray for the grace to receive it. Lord, in your mercy, hear Hear our our prayer. prayer. Blessed are you, our caring God, for you hear the cries of the poor, You see the tears in the eyes of all who mourn. You feel the pain of those in anguish, and you come to the side of the lonely. Call your church to compassion and service. Lord, in your your mercy, mercy, hear hear our our prayer. prayer. Blessed are you, our God of peace, for you have bid us to make warfare cease and to place our trust in you, who bore us up on eagles' wings. Raise up among us peacemakers and confound those who trust in chariots and horses. Lord, in your mercy, hear Hear our our prayer. prayer. Blessed are you, our God of justice, for you desire that all be one. Erase the prejudice and class divisions among us, that together we might share in your vision of harmony. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our our prayer. prayer. Blessed are you, our God of strength, for you do not desire harm, but you favor our health. Give to us, and as we pray, for Andrea, Bill, Charlie, Harold, John, Ruth, Sandra, Simon, Tyler, Vicki, Wayne, and any others in need, and necessary measures of health, patience, and hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our our prayer. prayer. In our cycle of prayer, we remember all those who continue to perform good work in this Diocese of Huron, as we pray for the people and the clergy of the Parish of Christ Church Amherstburg, St. Paul's Church Essex, Trinity Church Cotton. And for the people of this parish, And as in our cycle of prayer, we pray for Grace Lamb, Lori and Brian Laporte, Gail and Jean Latour, and all their families. And for all the women and men of the Canadian Armed Forces at home and abroad, Lord, in your mercy, hear our our prayer. prayer. For the departed, especially all those who have died in Canada and around the world from the effects of the COVID-19 virus, Lord, in your mercy, hear Hear our our prayer. prayer. Into your hands, O God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Gathering all our cares and concerns, let us pray in the words that Jesus, our Savior, taught us. Our Father, who art art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And we'll conclude our service with the doxology and our final hymn. Glory to God, whose, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen.
peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your minds and hearts in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God, creator, redeemer, and life giver be with you and all those you love this day and every day. Amen. Amen. <laughs>